Hello everybody, what is up? Uh, we're gonna be doing a collab with the one and only international master Eric Rosen who is the master of gambits basically Eric is gonna be teaching me and all of you guys obviously um, on how to play the Stafford Gambit Not how to play the Stafford Gambit actually how to specifically counter the Stafford Gambit because I hate playing against gambits I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Hopefully after today, I will uh, hate gambits a little bit less. We can start with like a, like kind of just general repertoire. Like you're in general against a Petrov, you're, you're taking on E5 from what yeah. I can see. Like you don't, you don't usually play Knight C3. Um, Cause there's other moves that exist here. Like there's Pawn D4, which mm -hmm. is another like very stable way of playing against uh against the Petrov mm -hmm. um, and it actually completely avoids the Stafford too. Like if you just wanted to avoid Stafford completely, you could play D4 oh. and enjoy life. I had no idea. I, I do like to play the mm -hmm. pe regular Petrov. I always play with like Knight takes E5 and after D6, I play Knight to C4. Um, I play. I Stafford. saw that. Yeah, I was yeah. looking up your games like right before we hopped on call. Oh. <laughs> and I saw you have a bunch of games in, in this line, mm -hmm. which I know is topical like during World Championship. Yeah. Absolutely, a lot of preparation um, there, but but yeah. So when you when you encounter knight c six, then this is the start of Stafford, okay. and uh, you should be taking on c six. Mm -hmm. Some people decline it, which just gives Black a, a slightly preferable position. There's a move that I've been enjoying playing recently, and I'll I'll, I'll show this to you, mm -hmm. just if you want to play it for content in the future. For content. Have you, heard of the, <laughs> have you heard of the Halloween Gambit? I have, actually, yes. So Halloween Gambit usually comes from a four knights. Mm-hmm. Where... And then after knight c6, knight takes e5, knight takes, and d4. Exactly. Right. Takes and d4, and white sacks a piece for the, the big pawn center. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is when you go into Stafford, if you really wanted to be the Gambiteer... You could transpose into Halloween by playing Knight C3. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to give this to you as my main recommendation. I'm just going to okay. say it's possible. Okay. And if you just want to have fun and be the one gambiting, and and especially around the season of Halloween, it's a festive opening. Yeah, it's a festive opening. Okay, for for content, we might try this opening on stream at some point. Yes. <laughs> okay. Only for content, but yeah, though. if if you want to like be objectively mm -hmm. proper, yeah, and play the best move, take on c six. Mm -hmm. okay. Everyone takes back with d pawn, and this is kind of the key starting position in uh, in Stafford. And when like preparing for this call, I was conflicted because there there's actually a lot of like refutations to the Stafford, mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of choosing one. And okay. knowing it well. Okay. So um, I like D3 and H3 so D3. currently. Okay. Yeah. I, so I don't know if you have any other recommendations or if you think that something's better, something might be better. Or Let's see what you're playing currently and then, then maybe we'll, we'll adjust. We'll try and fine tune. Okay. Um, so I'll play bishop c5. Uh, I will play H3. I'll take on f2. Oh. Oh, dear. Uh, oh yes. Oh so no! Th this, this is this is like one of the reasons I really like Stafford, is because stuff like this. You're trying to play really safe, and already like you're you're walking into a really messy line. White's still okay here. If you play King G one, Black can just force a draw. I think I um, lost like this against you at some point in the match. I'm pretty sure it's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even like GMs will walk into this. Oh my god! A lot of people will play King F three. And then there's a, a funny line, castling, king takes e4. You don't really want to go into this as white, even though white's up two pieces. Uh, My king, king is e4. on a bit of a trip. Yeah, it's it's fun when this happens, though. And another reason why I'm not kind of giving up this opening is mm -hmm. a significant number of players will walk into this. Okay. Um, if there's a similar line where white can try c3, I think it's good we're going through like the the move orders which don't quite work for white just so you have the understanding of like Absolutely. what black's tactical ideas are yep. 
Um, C3 is an attempt to just take over the center, which is generally what you want to do against Stafford. Like you have the two center pawns. Mm -hmm. um, this gets messy after knight takes e4. Because you can't take back, which would allow a bishop takes f2 and you're losing a queen. King e2, there's bishop g4. Tactics. And this is still objectively good for white. I don't recommend going into it because there's, there's some compensation for black. Mm -hmm. But after this, takes here, uh, f5. Uh... Yeah, if you know it really well, you'll be okay as white, but mm -hmm. uh, probably best to avoid. Okay. Um, okay, can't do that. So, you don't want to play h3, you don't want to play c3. Black is threatening knight g4 here. Uh-huh. Which is probably why, like, you know, a lot of times you are liking to play bishop e3, but that also gives yeah. black a lot of initiative. <laughs> so Discover the that move one to play... Sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So the the move to play is bishop e2. Okay. This way you just prevent the knight from coming in. Mm -hmm. Um actually I shouldn't say prevent cuz knight g4 is actually still a playable move. Oh which my we can God. get to. Because if you take this queen h4 I'm guessing. So if takes queen h4, yeah. Um oh, no. Good news is it's still completely okay for for white. Uh huh. Um, and there's actually a really thorough video on YouTube by Nerditsky oh. where he covers this recommendation. He actually spends a good deal of time covering this line for white and just showing how to like neutralize all the threats. Mm -hmm. um, the main thing to know is don't get mated. <laughs> don't so get mated, thanks. <laughs> yep. Um, and then put your queen on g3. Got it. Okay. If you know just up until this point, you'll you'll enjoy life a lot more, even compared to what you have been playing already. Um, Nerditsky has like way more analysis from this position, mm -hmm. which we could get into. Um, but it's probably just worth watching that video. Sure. And uh... yeah. Also, keeping it simple enough so Twitch chat can understand, because you know. Yeah, I'm trying to give you like the, mm -hmm. uh, the most like digestible mm -hmm. kind of, uh, I guess lines that that won't be too difficult to forget. Yeah, I do um, appreciate the, it. Yeah. Yeah, and the the thing with uh with this line is most players don't play knight g4. Mm -hmm. Most players actually play h5. Oh, okay. So knight g4 is more of like a sideline you won't encounter too often, but as long as you just remember take get your queen to g3, you'll be fine. Okay, I can remember that. Awesome. Um, so, let's say h5. Right. And now, again, black is preparing to play knight g4. And this is where move order is, again, pretty important. What would be your first kind of impression here? Uh... Like to play for white? Don't play h3, probably. Ooh. I feel like playing h3 in these positions always ends up being something a little bit bad. I'm always a little bit scared mm -hmm. playing stuff like h3 here. Um, h3 is like a very safe looking move. Yeah. Uh, but you do... I'll say h3 is completely fine. Like objectively, okay. it's still much better for white. Uh-huh. Um, the reason why I wouldn't recommend h3 as like your main white repertoire is because things get a little bit messy after queen d4. Oh. Where the pawn is attacked. You want to play bishop e3, but b2 is then also hanging. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you castle, there's there's this move, queen d6, to threaten knight g4, and you really have to be accurate. And I don't think it's worth trying to memorize <laughs> like many more moves of the, the computer refutation. Um, cause there is um, like, I think more simple line to go for. Mm -hmm. I get that. Um, yeah. but this is just part of my preparation. Like if anyone plays H3, I'm happy to go into queen D4, queen D6. And it's very effective in blitz and bullet. Cause a lot of white players are just not prepared instead of H3. This is where you can play C3 preparing D4. And this is again, what Nerditsky like shows in his video D4 allows you to just expand with tempo in the center. Uh-huh. 
Uh, there's not too many great ways for black to deal with the threat. Okay. The main move is knight g4 here, and I think this is the one we should focus on. Okay. I That looks very scary, so I agree. Uh-huh. There's another move, bishop b6, which well, I used to play myself. Huh. Well, this move is to, like, just prevent d4 from being a direct threat, right? So you can't Yeah, this, this is less threatening, but it's more prophylactic. Yeah. Um, but this looks... That, this doesn't look that difficult to deal with. Like, what if I just develop, like, knight to d2 or... Something yeah, knight like d2. That. I'll admit, I actually don't know, like, the absolute precise move, but knight d2 mm -hmm. looks completely fine. If we turn on the engine here, I'm sure it's going to give, like, plus two mm -hmm. for white. Oh, wow. At least. Okay. Yeah, it gives almost plus three, actually. Plus two Whoa. Point five, two point seven. That's kind of Yeah, the, I guess the thing to understand is if black ever goes for knight g4 to target f2, then there's... First of all, the reason why you played knight d2 is to reinforce e4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. And you can just respond to knight g4 with d4. Yep. Just block the bishop. Yep, got it. Yeah, mm. and it looks like most of the engine lines, like if bishop e6, top engine move, then you can play d4 and you're going to have a happy, stable center. Mm -hmm. Nothing too wrong. And happy, stable life. Exactly. Yep. So black is going to try and make you unhappy and unstable with the move knight g4. Okay. And if I play anything like d4 now, I'm guessing it's... Well, if I play d4 now, isn't that totally all right? Because there's no... Like, yeah, so this is where things or... begin to get interesting. Okay. And there's there's a lot of... Like the Stafford Gambit, it's kind of like an onion. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of layers to keep peeling away. <laughs> and sometimes it'll make you cry, but it's <laughs> part of the learning process. <gasps> That's an amazing line. The Stafford Gambit's a bit like an onion. Sometimes it'll make you cry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... uh. But sometimes, like, if you cook it right, it will taste really good. Okay. So anyway, um, Knight G4 used to just not be a known move until there was uh, this YouTube video. Um, it was called something like the Magical Stafford Line. It was by Jonathan Schrantz. Oh. Um, where he found a line that was not covered in the Naroditsky refutation video. Oh, God. And the idea is that after D4, it looks like everything is, is happy for, for white. Uh -huh. Black can strike with queen h4. Okay, and I go g3? And you go g3 and I go queen f6. And I go castle? Or is that too scary? No, castling is interesting. Most people don't castle. They don't, oh. uh, they're don't. they not uh, brave enough. I think <laughs> castling is actually a fine move. It's completely playable. Mm -hmm. It gets into a position where white is objectively much better. Like if you turn mm -hmm. on the engine, it will give almost plus four, I think. Right. Uh, engine is actually giving plus five. Oh my god, what? Whew. Now... Can I just be an the, engine? <laughs> the thing about this position specifically, from a practical standpoint, yeah. like if you look up the games like over the course of like what's been played on uh -huh. chess.com and Lee Chess, Black actually scores reasonably well because there's a lot of lines where it's still easy to go wrong for White and things Absolutely. can get very messy. Yep. Um, and even in this like Jonathan Trance video, he found a line... Like, he played black against Stockfish uh -huh. and almost managed to get a winning position as black. That's crazy. Which is crazy given That's... Stockfish just says it's completely winning for white. Yeah, so it's one of those openings. Um, yeah, and, and one of the main ideas, uh, like critical variations, which I'll just show you, not something you need to remember, it's just uh -huh. to appreciate the beauty of the line, <laughs> is if white plays f3, looks like white is just winning a uh -huh. piece easy. Then there's h4. Not already, okay, some pressure along the H-file. Mm -hmm. um, white can try and just keep all the bases covered, rook g1, but then after takes takes rook h2, there's so many lines where like things get messy and black's going to get compensation even if black is losing a piece. Um, and there's some... Okay. There's some like really insane engine line stemming after this. Black has this move. White doesn't want to take this. And if queen d4, there's like a crazy engine move, bishop c4, which like, it creates a situation. Engine will still say white's winning, but if you mm -hmm. dig deep, it's like almost a draw. Okay. Um, and this isn't worth getting into, but it just shows that... Um, These positions have a lot of counterplay There's some spiciness. Yeah. 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 
I had this a few months ago, actually, in, in Title Tuesday against a strong GM and blitzed out Bishop C4. Oh managed to win with like most of the game being opening prep. Oh my god, that's crazy. I mean, this is the part where chess is such a frustrating game sometimes because if people are playing a Stafford against me, they probably know how to play it. And I'm over here like, I don't know what I'm doing. Please go easy on me. <laughs> so again, you, you just need to put in the work of remembering kind of the key line, acknowledging that these traps exist, but you're not going to fall into the landmines. Okay, got it. So just play chess, right? Just play chess, but but commit at least the first 10 moves to memory. <laughs> <laughs> just commit the first 10 moves to memory. Uh, okay, just remember all the key yeah. lines. Yep, I agree, though. I do fully agree. I know I'm laughing right now, but I'm laughing in part because this is exactly part of the reason why I stopped playing competitive chess. Uh. <laughs> So it's like, huh, now I'm going back into it because I've been getting frustrated with online chess. Like, hmm, how do we go gotcha. all the way back here? <laughs> yeah, nobody. So, good. yeah, sometimes, um, like at, at the lower levels, you can just play chess and understand principles and stuff. Uh -huh. But at my level, at like our level, yeah. opening preparation is, is a much larger factor because mm -hmm. um, people will be. Uh, people are just super well prepared these days. There's more tricks and traps, which uh, mm -hmm. are easy to, especially when, when you play the same thing over and over again, you want to make sure your repertoire is robust. Mm -hmm. um, so the line that I'll recommend for you, uh, I was actually curious about castling, because I think this is actually a very fine line. Like If, if you wanted to castle, mm -hmm. you're completely fine here. Engine will say like plus three. It's giving bishop f8 as the top move. <laughs> which is a very good sign. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a good move at all. I mean, I think part of the reason that this position, like this cost link thing would actually work is because if you ever play h4, then his bishop takes g4, so that just shuts down most of blacks. It's hard for blacks to make progress. Like, yeah. we, we've established this uh, threatening-looking knight, but it's it's hard to actually crack through, and white has a move f3 here. Oops, that was a mouse slip. Pawn f3, um, kicking away the knight. Mm -hmm. And yeah, top engine move is knight h6. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the thing to know here is, like, don't don't play f3. F3 yeah. is still probably a fine move, but it, it, it walks into a lot of unnecessary complications. Yeah, yeah, fully agree. The move I was going to initially recommend for you is bishop f4 or bishop f3. Oh, that seems which interesting. Is uh -huh. also like completely playable just uh blocking the uh the queen from targeting f2 this bishop still attacked at some point you're gonna be on your own and as long as you you have some game plan between bishop f3 and castling it's gonna be hard for for black to hurt you mm -hmm. with all this said i do have a few traps like if, if you were to play bishop f3 there's still a few ways that white can go wrong Mm -hmm. So I guess I could show you, like, the, the main trap I've been trying to pull lately, and sometimes it, it, it can work quite effectively, um, is to blitz out the move bishop e6. Because if d takes c5... d takes c5, and met with, I believe, rook d... Is it rook d8? Yeah, rook d8 first. Oh. Natural move is queen e2. Right. And then there will be bishop And then knight e5. Oh, knight to e5. And already oh. black is better. Yeah, you get hit with the knight d3 next move too. Yep. Oh wow. Okay. So that's the thing about this line. Like there, there's, we're we're unpeeling more layers. We, yeah, we're, we're peeling the onion. Prime. Yeah. Yes. This is why I think I'm gonna stick with castle because I think castle is the easiest. You just kind of put your king away and you follow the opening principles and you know, you go on to your life. <laughs> go on I think that's life. fair. Yeah. I'll I'll admit I I haven't explored this line so thoroughly so mm -hmm. now now i feel incentivized to, to study this line really deeply and try and find some some tricks and traps against white castling oh no oh no i, but... was, about to, I was about to be like yep i've solved the stafford no more stings from eric i can just be done with this for the rest of my life but <laughs> but this is how chess works like uh -huh. when you castle you know it's objectively good for white it's it's close to objectively winning if 
somehow you run into like some tricky prep that you're going to learn from it. Um, but you should know that, okay, the position's much better for white. There's no reason to be too afraid. Uh Unless -huh. Of course. maybe I'm preparing for you very deeply, then I'm going to try and find some way Then to he's gonna he's gonna pull attack. Eric is gonna pull out the onion and make you cry. Make you peel away the layers of the onion and then you will cry. That's what Eric Yeah, will I'm going do to to keep you. peeling away more layers. But Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, castling, castling looks fine. I mean, there's not too many openings where you're going to get like a plus two, almost plus three advantage by move 10. And this isn't too much to remember. I think the trickiest thing is to remember the move order with like when to play c3, when to play bishop e2. So maybe it's worth reviewing like real quick. Okay. Um, Knight of three, knight of six. yeah. Yeah. Takes. Takes. Uh, wait, there's no knight c3 line here, right? Knight c3 is just bad. Knight C3 is, is completely fine. Oh, okay. It, it's actually, there's a chess.com like premium video course where Oh, but uh, is this Pearl the Shin one recommends I would... Knight C3. Oh, this is the one that I was, I kind of confused. I think it was the one with bishop c5, and then I played h3 here. H3, yeah. Because now you don't get hit with the bishop takes f2, knight takes e4 line. I had these Yep. two things confused. If you wanted to play this one, Oh. this is also very fine for white. Okay. Um... This is what Hikaru plays. This is what uh, some other like chess streamers and YouTubers recommend. Um, the thing with H3 here, there's a move, a new move I discovered recently, G5, that I'll admit I haven't done too much analysis on, but it's Mm it leads to craziness. -hmm. Yeah, I have played a game like this in Blitz where I just accidentally stumbled upon the perfect combination against the <laughs> Ooh. against the um uh, yeah, Stafford with knight c three, h three, and then I actually just played d three, I think. I got a pretty okay game with it, but he definitely did D3 play is g solid. four. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you don't play bishop e2. Okay. Because after bishop e2, there is a crazy line queen d4, provoking castling, and then g4. And then if takes, there's h5, and black is already preferable. Uh-huh. I think it's worth sticking with the line that we just showed. Um, of course, this is an alternative, but you should kind of know the difference between knight c3 and d3. With d3, you remain a bit more flexible with how you develop your knight eventually. Right, right, okay. That sounds good. Okay, so knight c3 and d3 are both totally acceptable here. Let's For now, let's stick with d3. I rather like it. Um, the positions, I think, were not entirely poor. <laughs> so here we go. C3, right? No, wait. Holy shit. So this is where if you forget, you kind of have to rely on like your understanding, figuring things out. Yeah. C3 makes sense because we want to push d4. So C3. And this is where I have my taste e4. No. And then you have d takes e4 and bishop takes f2 and everything goes downhill. Yep. Oh my god, not like this. But but like No. C C3 is still like better for white after queen e2, but you don't want to mess with it. <laughs> so remember like C3 and H3, they're a bit premature because they allow these Right. tricky tactics. So we just develop and then Yeah. we protect the we protect the queen and give ourselves the option of castle. See, this is the part where we actually have to try to like you can memorize moves or you can also kind of like sometimes understand why you make Understanding moves. is way more important than memorizing. Yeah, this is Such like a a common mistake among like so many, especially beginner players, they just memorize, but they don't understand. Yeah. No, you need bishop to e2 not to provoke h5. You need bishop e2 in order to defend your queen and enable Yeah. yourself to castle so your king can also be safer. And your queen is also protected. It's a two-in-one kind of thing. The other way to understand this is by asking the very simple question, what's the threat? Right. What is the The threat? threat is actually threefold here. We, we can imagine there, there's like a three different moves black wants to play. Black either, uh, of course, wants to play knight g4. This is like the main threat. But there's also the idea of knight takes e4 and bishop takes f2 with uh, these like tactics with the d file. So bishop e2 stops everything. There we go. That's all And we this need. is this is sometimes the best reply to like dealing with gambits. You just have to ask yourself, what's the threat? How do I Right. effectively stop it? Um, so again, we can continue. Uh, yeah, now we can play C3. 
C3, good. Yeah, you want to yeah. play D4? Mm -hmm. So you're preparing to meet knight G4 with? Uh, now we're ready to meet it with D4. Awesome. Yep. Queen H4. And then we can play G3. And then if queen F6, then I castle. Cool. So the line I will decide to play on. And... Yep. L let me let me take on H2. Let's see how you deal with this. Oh god. Okay. Um I have the evaluation bar on and the evaluation bar uh, says it's climbing. <laughs> engine but, doesn't like this move, but uh humans probably sometimes will. this is what to do in Stafford. Mm -hmm. I think I'll probably play G4 here. Love it. Yeah, and you're you're just you're not letting me have any fun. Mm -hmm. If I play this, you'll you'll hurt me even more. Yeah. Wouldn't like yeah, knight takes h2 is probably just not a good move. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing, right? A lot of people way over... So, I always like to emphasize that there's a lot of threats and stuff. And, like, attacking in chess is very important. But at the same time, just remember, if your opponent overreaches and oversteps and gives you too much material, as long as you don't get checkmated, you'll probably win. Yep. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a very fair way of putting it. Yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> a lot of people have the strategy they want to go straight for the throat and, mm -hmm. and try and destroy their opponent as quickly as possible which i enjoy like myself but mm -hmm. uh other strategy is just to to be chill take things when things are given to you i like how eric has pretty much the different playing style from his like personality like totally different there's eric you know wholesome sweet streamer and oh. then his, his chest style is just like going all in <laughs> and meanwhile mine is more like uh <laughs> Let me just wait forever until you make a mistake. Yeah, I feel like my my chess style has been crafted by Twitch chat. Oh, not really? sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, over the the years of streaming, Twitch chat has been more and more incentivizing me to play like aggressively, dubiously, and then there uh, it just leads to more entertainment. So I've I've kind of developed this this oh. aggressive style as a streamer. I see. I never really thought about it that way because I have never ever, apart from the fact that I picked a bullet for Twitch chat, I've never changed my play style for anything. My chess is how I want to play it. So that's really interesting you say that actually. And I also mm -hmm. remember we played like this one London at the World Cup. Mm. Well, I mean, not between uh, chat. It wasn't the fact that Eric was playing the female women's World Cup with me. We were playing outside of the actual <laughs> event. <laughs> yeah, obviously. it was uh, yeah, not in the playing room. <laughs> yes, he was not in the playing room. But there was that one London, and I actually wanted to uh, just quickly ju like juggle a few, bounce a few ideas off of you from the London. Sure, definitely. Like, yeah. what do you really dislike about the London as why? Well? Like, what do you hate oh, most? So. I mean, I've uh, seen this bishop f5. I've played this bishop f5 line, which is um, very symmetric, right? And I personally don't like it. I think Hikaru also played it in today's Tattoo Tuesday. But mm -hmm. I personally don't like it because it's so drawish. And I mean, I obviously shouldn't be... Um, well, not that I shouldn't be, but I don't like drawish positions that much. I definitely You enjoy. want something that, that's more yeah. dynamic? Yeah, I want spicy. I like having a little bit of spice in my life. So I mean, that's I've, the line, but... Mm -hmm. I was impressed with your prep, like, in our casual Blitz game. <laughs> I don't think I ever posted that one to YouTube because there was a copyright song playing in the background. Oh, no. Um, but we, like, we, we had the video. I might post it anyway. Mm -hmm. I posted it on mine, uh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I have that on mine. I show, I think it was, like, I show Eric how to play London. But, yeah, that was a fun one. I think it went like this. It was probably something a lot like this. Uh, you played, uh, you, you didn't play c5 so soon, you played oh, bishop d6, right, 95. Bishop d6. Yeah. I think you were following your prep for your first mm -hmm. round opponent in, in World Cup. Um, it was knight d2, c5. Yeah. Uh, and, and then you played this knight e4 move. Mm -hmm. And I played queen c2, and then, then you were very well prepared with cd4, which yeah. not too many players know. And then I ended up blundering, like, really soon. Um, I think I'm supposed to take on C... I, I think I just took back, and then you played F6. Yep. I remember you played knight takes C6. I took yeah. on F4, and you played knight B4, and I actually had A5, and I missed and that. And you can trap my knight. Yeah. Right. That's what, this, like, I took yeah. so long, and then... Yeah, you were I'll have to go back me, at the yes. footage. 
Yeah, I mean, this was one of those games where it was like, it's it's just like what. I mean, obviously, you don't have to play exactly theory. Right? This is another worry. Like when I when I study theory and when I play theory, my opponent might not know that he's supposed to play theory too, and then he strays off of the you know yep. the the beaten course. And I'm like, what the fuck, <laughs> my dude, <laughs> help, <laughs> help so me here. So this is why understanding mm-hmm. is just more important than memorizing lines. This is so if you true. understand like ideas and the opponent deviates, then you'll still have some grasp of what the relevant ideas are in the position. And, uh, yeah, it's like, it, it's part of chess at any, every chess game, there's going to be some point where you leave your comfort zone or leave mm-hmm. opening theory and you'll be on your own and you just have to prepare yourself for those situations. Yeah. I mean, this is the part where I think after I was looking at, I played some other games using this line and I think castle was probably one of the other things I was looking at where I just don't have this option of C takes D4. Um, and it just gets... And then I usually play oh, something castling. like castling. Yeah, instead of queen. Um, yeah, this is where like I guess the engine will suggest. I mean, I I assume uh, f six is a idea. That's oh, true. But castling is. Well, f six, knight takes c six, b take bishop takes f four, e takes f four, but b takes c six, and then I mean that pawn is just not a worry for white, right? Like, actually, mm-hmm. surprisingly, having the double pawn is not usually that big of a worry for white because you just permanently stop black from pushing up. I, yeah, I actually um, don't really know the London for. I've only ever played it as black, so all my assumptions about white's positional gameplay comes from me playing it as black. I will also say this is a kind of a new line for me. The, um, hmm. This like early ninety five move. Oh, I see. Because okay. usually I don't play this move order. Like for the first many years of me playing the London, I play bishop g three, which is just another line. Like, right. To to look into, I guess you have to be prepared as black. I play the exact, well, this is me revealing all my preparation now, but I play okay. the exact same way. I just go castle. And... Okay, let's see. Okay. Okay. Ah, so queen c7. Yeah, so this is a very trendy line these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Idea knight bd7 and e5. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, objectively, like, black can, can equalize without too much trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, I have my own kind of sideline that I play against this is to... Go for this e4 move. Oh, people have been playing this against me. I find it really annoying. Mm. I hate it when op- when the center is not closed. I have this like mm. I'm a Spanish player, so I always like it if my center is like perfectly locked and nobody. Like the more closed center, yeah. interesting. I like those positions a lot. Here, I actually have no idea what to do. <laughs> I have zero. Uh, clue. yeah. Don't play knight c6. This, this is one of the main traps. After knight b3, you're losing uh, oh, material. Oh shoot. Uh, yeah, that doesn't so look good. So I'll save you from knight, future trauma. Knight d7. Uh, knight d7, I think rook e8. I'll admit it's, uh, like, I don't remember so much specific preparation, but um, as far as I recall, there's some idea to play e5. Like maybe uh-huh. right away. D takes e4, I'm guessing. It's probably my only option here. Yeah. And then in this position, uh, I like to take with the bishop. I think okay. e4 might be slightly better. But there is the idea if, if takes, we we fork. We fork. <laughs> I like this. This is Because sometimes people yeah. pre-move knight takes e4 as black in this oh, position. Oh, God, I see. Expecting okay. knight e4. Mm-hmm. But... Do, you, do you, like, train openings? Well, I mean, actually, I guess you don't have to tell me this because it's going to... I'm, I'm, I'm happy to share secrets. Oh, like, okay, um, okay. I'm not super serious in, like, trying to get to the next level and keep everything hidden, so... Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I usually am never like that. It's just I'm very well aware that, you know, you're playing tournaments and stuff, and usually when I play tournaments, I hop onto, like, five different alt accounts, and I never play mm. any games on stream, and... Yeah, anyways, I get super serious about it, so I just don't know how serious you are, so I don't want to, like ask you for opening stuff and it turns out to yeah. be something you actually end up playing so i just want to uh check in with so, you on that yeah yeah my philosophy is that if if i've shared like my own prep out there uh, people might prepare against it but it'll mm-hmm. motivate me to prepare even deeper against other people's <laughs> prep so it, it allows me to learn more um oh uh, the other thing is that i play a bunch of different stuff like i can uh-huh. play london i can play e4 i can play c4 so people kind of have to look at a lot of lines if they want to prepare. 
uh, yeah. really for either color. That's so yeah, feel free. Like I'm, okay. I'm happy to share secrets. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I mean the London is really interesting because I played this line, but I, I actually have been running to this line now that we actually talk about it because I have this issue where you, when you plan an opening on stream during blitz or whatever bullet, right? You just forget the opening like instantly. And then mm -hmm. you just, you're like the next time you see it, like, Oh fuck, mm -hmm. I had to look at this line. And then yeah. you keep doing that. And I keep never, ever, ever looking at any of the openings. So like, I remember now, I have a lot of issues in London, like, specifically this one, for example, um, which is just very annoying. I just don't know what to do here. Apparently, the engine says Bishop takes G3, but I don't see a plan after that. Yeah, you kind of have to complete development. Um, I mean, it might be worth, like, if you're not enjoying these positions because the center is opening up and this Bishop... I mean, it's, it's subjectively fine. You just mm -hmm. have to maybe expand on ideas further, like, if you're getting these structures to to learn it even deeper um but there i mean there's so many things you can play against london especially if you're playing a move order like from this move order there's there's so many different ways black can can fight the london mm -hmm. i know you i think you briefly asked me like what i i dislike the most about right. playing the london and one of the more annoying lines is uh is pawn c5 oh really okay where i'll play e3 Knight c6. Uh huh. And now, of course, okay. If you're playing black here, you you're gonna have to learn like a few of the tricky deviations. Mm -hmm. Um, the the trendy move these days is knight b d2. Okay. Um, but against a lot of like, if you play online against a lot of players, people will play c3, and this is already preferable for black. Oh, queen with the b6. queen b6. Okay. This is... You may be familiar with this line. I am very familiar with this from Trompovsky. Ah, okay. Yeah, similar idea. Line. Yeah, okay. Idea queen b3, c4, if takes, it's good structure for black. Mm -hmm. If queen c2, you have bishop f5. Right, this bishop f5 move is very interesting. I like it. Yeah, and yeah, of course the queen can't take because we win mm -hmm. material. Yep. And if queen c1, you can choose between e6 or the move I like is knight h5 and... Uh, you get the bishop pair, just better position for black. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is one of those lines that, so the thing that chess, uh, sorry, chat, trendy equals good. And trendy typically means not just good, it means that it's like topical as of this moment. So there's like trends in chess. Like if Carlson will play one line at some point, then everybody will want to play that line or if like, you know, somebody like, Kasparov, or not, well, Kasparov, not so much now, but a lot of the top grandmasters, they play a new line, like Giri or something. Everybody will want to play that one line. So. Yep. And, and it's usually the top, like, super GM setting the trends for the rest of us, like mere mm -hmm. mortals. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, like, recently at, at very high level, this, uh, this London Knight BD2 has been, like, very trendy, especially in, like, Rapid and Blitz. Um, and if you want to really try and just out-prepare white in the London, it requires a ton of, like, study and knowledge, and um, it might not be Worth the it. most, like, practical <laughs> approach for you. Yeah. But at, like, a very high level, Queen B6 is one of the, the most testing lines against London. The most even testing here. lines? Okay. I... Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I want to just play, like, my e6, bishop d6 stuff, mm -hmm. and just keep playing that if I want to actually, like, fully commit to play, like, queen b6 or something like that, because, you know, then it's a lot of theory, right, and all of that. But it looks fun to test out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if you play queen b6, you're basically asking for a theoretical battle. Difference here is, okay, white doesn't have queen b3, but there's dc5, and it gets into, like, this really messy gambit-type position, um, which... It's good to be aware of, but uh, it's the type of thing like, okay, if you're like a super pro player, it's worth like ex putting the hours. But um, if you want a more simple line here, there there are different lines to choose from. Um, very popular these days is just to take on d4, mm -hmm. relieve the tension, and then put your bishop on f5 or g4. Mm -hmm. And bishop f5 is uh, is very standard. And then you can get kind of a very solid, like reverse, um, I don't know, reverse like Queen's Gambit exchange, is the so called Carl's bad structure. Oh, yes, the uh, e6, c3 structures. Yep. Yeah. yeah and okay. most times, white does play c3, you play e6, and you're ready to play bishop d6. And 
especially if you're playing a lot of Blitz and Bullet online, this I think is like a bit easier to internalize and there's less trickiness I can try. Yeah, I like this because I think today I was looking at a, a game that Hikaru would play with, like Bishop F5 out, but in, when they took on D4, it was uh, with the pawn on E3 instead of... So it would be like this pawn structure, but F3, E3, and D4, which is so much more symmetrical than this crossbot structure, right? Like it's just... It's just unplayable for a win or anything like that so i definitely like it when the pawn structures are not symmetrical because that oh yeah for sure there's more gameplay <laughs> and if you're playing this line against like a lower rate player who's trying to just be solid against you and maybe play for a draw or just play to to get a drier position yeah there's a lot of dynamic things that can happen of course even if you trade bishops um once you complete development you have the minority attack potential mm -hmm. you have just very nice peace harmony um there's also a, a potential gambit line here if white plays one of the main moves queen b3 you can gambit the b7 pawn with just bishop d6 it? okay um and this is like this is a line i'd probably recommend just knowing and if you just know the basics, you can get like interesting positions as takes, uh, takes, takes, and king f8. Mm -hmm. And you've lost a pawn, but you have the bishop here. White's queen is a bit deep in black's territory. The king is still in the center. There's some cool ideas with the king side pawn storm. Um, I took some time like just studying this as black and played this in a few blitz games. Um, so this is if you wanted to like peel another layer and right. uh and expand upon okay like here's my solid setup but if you want to learn something more specific uh, specific you can kind of learn deeper into this gambit line and got it maybe uh out prepare even strong players you definitely like the gambit lines i i respect that <laughs> so this is a way so there's uh when we say gambit there's different kind of tiers of gambits. of course yeah there's really uh like dubious gambits which are actually like maybe not mm -hmm. so good but like still Stafford, super trappy, yeah. like Stafford. Uh -huh. But then there's also just variations where you sack a pawn and you get a different type of advantage and you get adequate compensation, basically. So here, um, this is computer approved. Mm -hmm. Like, like if you turn on the engine, approved. it yeah. will initially prefer white. Mm -hmm. uh, but then if you start digging deeper and maybe use an engine with more depth, uh mm -hmm. and also like look at the not only rely on the engine but like look at the databases you'll you'll see that black scores pretty well here got it yeah i mean i can definitely see the compensation appeal of this position i am just very very bad at gambiting i am extremely awful at like being okay with losing material in exchange for something or the potential to get it mm. back later it's just a very like it's just like a personal kind of thing it's really got nothing to do with the actual position this is totally fine i can see that fully. gotcha yeah and yeah sometimes you just want to choose openings that more align with your style mm -hmm. like if you want to just not go into gambit sharp positions where you're down material and have to prove compensation like here queen c8 is a completely acceptable move mm -hmm. it's actually i think the main line even though bishop d6 is more trendy recently but yeah uh, yeah here queen you just, C8 defend. just defend right yeah man so many options in chess <laughs> And every uh, so many people, and then you always have to make this little ga gamble. Like, does my opponent know it all, or do I know it more than my opponent? So yeah, eventually, like as long as you're not blundering anything too severe, you you and your opponent will be on your own, and then you don't have to worry about like super deep preparation. But right, I know it's scary when the opponent is like very deeply prepared and mm -hmm. uh, in sharp lines, but. In a quieter position, it's it's more about what will unfold in the middle game and end game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all of these things, guys, we're only going to like move eight or ten. Usually these lines go on, like, well, not lines, but we usually get the ideas all the way until like move 20. And sometimes not even reaching move 20 is enough. You have to know all the middle game plans as well for off to move 20. So you basically have the first 30 moves of the game more or less like structured out. At least that's how I used to do. Well, that's how I did my yeah. World Cup. So. It, it depends on the opening. Like if you're playing like Night or of Grunfeld or like oh, Moonlight Sicilians. <laughs> that's like move 40. Get... <laughs> okay. 
Sounds great. Thank you so much, Eric. Really appreciate it. And my chat appreciates it too. They are, they learned. Hopefully. Oh, my pleasure, Nemo. Yeah, thanks again for reaching out and, and uh, we'll be in touch. All right, see you. Thank you so much. All right, bye. Bye.